All right, action. We're now live. Happy Thirsty Thursday, everyone. You may have noticed we're in a new location. And that location is Paula's office, which, fun fact, it used to legitimately be a closet. <laughs> you can't always have nice things. Um, we're going to try and give everyone just a second here to kind of get settled and check in. But we've ha been having a really hard time, like, reading your comments while we're also still talking. So Paula actually got out her trusty old laptop. And we're going to see if we can read comments off if of I'm the laptop. Oh. To do this. Oh, good, 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 good. Okay. Oh, yay. We get to see ourselves. Oh. Oh, oh wow. I don't know if this is good or that not is good. Gonna be, <laughs> that is going to be good. It, okay, let's see if people join. Okay. It's like a little bit slow, but I think it'll work. <laughs> it's because I, I I cannot read all the little words. So Someone says, hey there. See, I can read that off of there, but I have good eyes. Here, show off. It's a lot better in an off in this office because yes, you I, like we're sitting and I can actually see it. Whereas when we're standing out there, we usually have a table in front. That's so true. Like, That's true. We're farther eh. away usually. So fun fact about me is I have like this. I don't know if I ever told you, but I love glasses. Like I have, <laughs> but like the funniest part is that I have like better than twenty twenty vision. Spoken from the person who's never had to have a mask <laughs> on with glasses. <laughs> Yeah, and so whenever I see like people like your glasses, I'm like, oh, she looks so good with her glasses. I wonder I could have glasses, which is like a I have trifocals. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, my husband mm -hmm. has uh, he calls them BCDs, birth control devices. They're like the big like. Nice. <laughs> it's pretty good. All right, all right. Let's talk about um something homebrewing related, maybe since it's you know Thursday, okay. Thursday. Uh, we're going to talk about our new limited edition wine kits. But before mm -hmm. I do that, uh, because I'm a very forgetful person, I wanted to um, talk about who won our Valentine's Day Instagram and Facebook photo contest. So, without further ado, drum roll please. Uh, beer rad underscore B works. He shared a photo of his tropical fruit Mellow Mel. And he is the winner of a $50 gift card from Homer, Ohio. So Yay. anything this one, I'll be DMing you and we'll get that all sorted out. But congrats on your prize. And then for Facebook, um, I do put these up on Facebook after the fact. So Andy Casapini, I believe is how your name is cool spelled. Name. Yeah. yeah. Um, it sounds very Italian. Much very. <laughs> um, you shared a photo of bottling and you, I really enjoyed your caption. You talked about how homebrewing is something that brings us all together. And not only like in current times, but also like throughout history. Mm -hmm. It's always been kind of a part, obviously, since the first people discovered it. So congratulations to, I don't, I don't know beer rad underscore B works. I don't know your name. So congratulations to you. And then congratulations to Andy. Um, I'll be going ahead and send you guys messages and getting your $50 gift cards in your inbox, I guess. That's super cool. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. by the way, hello, Arizona. Because I can read, but they're writing. Hey! It's so exciting. Shout out from Arizona. <laughs> Which I'm assuming is much warmer than here. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I know. I feel like all we've been talking about on this live is how cold it is here. But um, we had to close the office the other day because... First time in 10 years. Yeah, because, well, my vehicle, the Prius, was literally snowed in. Like, I could not leave my house. So, that was a fun time. We had about 12 inches of snow um, in a 24-hour period. Was it only 12? Yeah, it was 12. Only? You said only 12. Well, no, no. The but only there was so much wind. There were 20-some-mile-an-hour winds. Yeah. The only reason I say only 12, like, don't get me wrong, that's a lot, is because on my balcony, I, like... My cat, I opened the door because my cat likes to go on her on the balcony. <laughs> and she, like, tried to jump. It didn't work. No. It was like, no. yeah, it was like. No, but we had high. another inch already today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyways. Yes. All right. So let's talk about. You know about... what we're not doing right now? Oh. What are we doing? How do you get me here? Other than I work in this office. <laughs> okay, what are we drinking today? All right. Paula? Actually, we're drinking Moscato, which is um, Okay, I'm sorry. Drinking. Can you say that again? <laughs> it hurts my feelings a little bit. <laughs> All right, we're drinking Moscato, and this is a typical Moscato because, um, truthfully, I cannot replicate um, these new LE kits. They're, they're like, when we talk about them, you're going to know why, because they're super original. And um, I chose Moscato because one of the kits is, has muscat in it. The muscat grape is what's used to make Moscato. In fact, the word muscat um, in Italy means Moscato, but in this case, we just have... Um, it's not super sweet because of that I could never, um, but it's just an, an off dry, 
Uh, Moscato, much sweeter than I would ever do. And um, we, you'll find out that it, it, we're just drinking it because it's got the same great varietal. But it doesn't have the same profile at all when we talk about how cool this I, stuff is. So Paula and I were talking before this live. In my new cup. And she was talking about how this is like the first Moscato she may have ever had in her life. Which, I thought that was my rule. I thought that I'm supposed to be the one that doesn't right. have the drink. Well, I'm going to reveal, and for those of you in my age group, you totally get this. But back in the day, when I first started drinking, if you were going to drink wine, and, and people didn't drink wine, really. Hmm. It wasn't a thing. It's like a big thing now. <laughs> we drank um, white Zinfandel. Okay. Okay, and white Zinfandel was Isn't like a California? kind of a blush, kind of California thing, and it was sweet. And so we drank white Zin. And so now, though, like if you're starting to drink wine and you want something sweet, you drink Moscato. Yeah. Nobody this drinks white like, Zin anymore. I'm pretty sure that Moscato is like probably the first wine that I ever had. And there's no question. Yeah. Um, we do want to show you these really cool glasses. They have our Homebrew Ohio logo on them. And they're sunless wine glasses. Um, they are up on our site, available to purchase. So, cheers. Okay, cheers. This will be interesting. That is so sweet. <laughs> I feel like your face... I feel like that's what... I feel like your face did the same thing. If you've seen our pineapple sour ale oh, video... Oh, similar. I'm gonna, like... I should go back and get a screen caption of oh. you doing that. Because it was the same face, but it was for sweet. I don't know what's wrong with you. I'm just dry. I'm just dry. <laughs> <laughs> dry. Yeah. I love Moscato. I always have. But it's because it's the first one that I ever tasted, and it's very sweet. It's, I mean, it's... And many of my family members, that's all I drink. Yeah. This and Riesling. It's practically grape juice, if you want to be. It is. But you know what? <laughs> that's funny that you said that because, as me being the nerd that I am, when I was reading up on the Muscat, it said that the Muscat is probably one of the only wines that actually tastes like the grape. And you huh. just said it tastes like grape juice. Yes. So look, you might be more sophisticated than you think. I am so... I am so sophisticated. There we go. Um, I just, I do want to tell this story very quickly. Um, Todd keeps trying to get me, he, he thinks that, he always asks me, what are you doing for your movie on Thursday? Because we're movie stars? Yeah, we're movie stars movie now, stars. obviously. And he always goes, what's the movie today? And I said, well, it's a movie about wine. And he sent me a Photoshop picture of a beret with our logo on it. And he said that I had to wear it. I was like, I am not wearing a beret. Not wearing a beret? Everyone, I might wear a beret. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You I could, could do a beret. A beret. I could do See, a beret. everyone here today, I didn't realize it was going to be such a, like, a big deal. But I always wear hats. Like, I literally am never without a hat. And today I put on this fancy wine drinking shirt. And I, the hat just didn't feel right. But apparently I'm supposed to wear one because they're telling me. I like it. I like beret. it without the hat. <laughs> Yeah, I thought it was We might good. have to drink like this, you're so fancy. <laughs> Alright, let's talk about the kits. Alright, which one do we talk about first? Um, let's do this one. Okay. So, the Norello. Okay. Um, I don't know if you, you guys can tell. I should have brought a regular size kit in here mm -hmm. for reference. But these are like, these are big boys. Like, I'm pretty strong and I had to put some heft into carrying these over. They're like um, 50 pounds. Mm -hmm. Are they really? Yes. Yeah, real that real doesn't close. surprise me. Mm -hmm. So, like, a normal kit probably is about yay big. Mm -hmm. These ones are a lot bigger. Um, well, this is a 14 liter, so you're looking at 14 liters of, of juice in this baby. Yeah. Yeah. And you are you always say that, like, the more juice in there, the more flavor, so mm -hmm. that makes sense. Um, so I'm already in love with the Norello, and I haven't even had it yet. <laughs> it happens. Oh, um, that's funny, because I feel the same way about this. We're just doing it. We are. We are. Um, so the Norello, it's from Sicily. Um, and it the grapes where they grow is on Mount Etna, which is a legit volcano. Like an actual volcano that's still erupting. Because uh, you hear volcano and you're like, oh, okay, it's like probably dormant, whatever. Okay, I'm going to interrupt you for a second, because someone said you look good in hats. But you have awesome, awesome hair, so it's good not to wear one sometimes. Oh, well, you thanks. have to get, you have to see. How, this is so fun when I can hear you guys. See. This. <laughs> Paul, right, go ahead. Paul is, Paul is finally living in twenty twenty one. 
<laughs> you can drag me in. Um, yeah, so the grapes grow near a volcano, so what that does is it actually, like, changes the soil composition, so it actually puts some, like, minerals, different mm. minerals and stuff in there, and then that is translated in the wine. Obviously not the Moscato. Yeah, but yeah. No, because that one's going to be a beautiful, rich, dark red, full of excitement, really, because, um... You know, I even try, I, obviously we haven't made these. They're brand new. They're limited edition. Yeah, they're, they're brand, brand new. new. Even if I'd have made them like the minute they got off the truck, they wouldn't be ready to drink today. Yeah. So we're not able to share that with you, but we certainly are able to share some of the excitement that we get on the back end when we order things. Yeah. And when we start to see things like it's on volcanic rock and, and it's in Sicily and you know what the temperature is going to be and Italian wine's awesome anyway, you start looking at this and, and, this varietal is going to be one that you can't match. You can't clone. Like, a lot of times I'll try to get something that's similar. Yeah, she was like, like I'm not even going to try today. I said, um, she's like, cause people forget are just, about it. Yeah, she's like, eh, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Another thing about it is that um, the nighttime temperatures there are a lot, like, they get to be a lot cooler. So that brings out the acidity of the grape, which I thought that that was kind of a cool fact. Mm -hmm. I The more... Okay, so I don't know who all out there is watching this, and I don't know how into wine you are or whatever, but the more you learn about it, the like the cooler it becomes, essentially. Because at first you're like, oh, okay, that's pretty neat. It's like wine in you. Yeah, yeah like, it mm. and then, like, the more you learn about it, you're like, oh, that actually is pretty cool. Like, But I think it's also, like, and I love to cook, so I always liken things to things I know. And so when I cook, I mean, I legitimately will sit on Pinterest and read recipes and I will know <laughs> I can totally see that oh, for sure. nerd <laughs> alert I will know whether I like the recipe or not just by a the ingredients and b the quantities of the ingredients okay I'm gonna know I'm gonna know what the palettes are I'm gonna know I'm gonna substitute this or that because I also I'm not gonna follow directions <laughs> me neither so <laughs> when we start to get things like this I can read this and I can go well, you know I'd try it but I don't know that I'm gonna marry 30 bottles of it mm -hmm. or there are times that I'm like Who's making this wine? Because I'm having some. Yeah. <laughs> this is a who's making this wine? Because I'm having some. It might some. be us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we said my last kombucha was reminiscent of Moscato. Oh. Huh, that's kind of cool. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That can happen. Um, mm -hmm. kombucha is kind of cool because um, my husband makes kombucha sometimes, mm -hmm. and it's like a really good alternative to like an alcoholic beverage if you want some. If you if you want an alternative to alcohol, but <laughs> I don't. But I hear some people do. <laughs> Um, so this particular wine is going to have a strawberry, cherry, and rose, um, like, aroma slash type of a vibe. Strawberry, cherry, rose. I mean, this is going to be pretty complex. It's not going to be a basic wine. Mm -hmm. And I think one of our viewers has also just made a really good point. The more you know, the more you can appreciate the flavors. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I agree with that. The, it also, what's interesting, though, it has, is supposed to have a hint of cinnamon and herbs. So is that the like volcano? That, that's kind of what I was thinking because when I was reading it said something about like the earthy tones being from that. So I would imagine. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I, I'm telling you what, I'm going to dig it. But I am, I mean, I am like big, bold, as you guys may know. Big, bold, red, dry, give me Spanish, give me Italian, give me Argentinian, Chile, all yeah. of those. I want that. Mm -hmm. I want that. Yeah. You're really excited. Let's add the say. Sicilian to it. Yeah. We all, we always say on this live, like, we get so excited. We're like, we need to try all the things, but I really think we need to try it. Like, you need to try that. Agreed. To make your soul complete. It's all about my soul. <laughs> um, so this kit is going to retail for $147.99. Um, not bad for a limited no, edition. No, it's not. I mean, it's volcano grapes. <laughs> like, you heard it here. Like, what, do you, what more do you want? Volcano grapes only one forty seven ninety. You're killing me. So let's talk about food pairings. Okay? <laughs> yeah, I did look that up, and and I think that also tells you a lot about a wine. Um, and the deal is, when you start looking at food, and they start talking about a white fish, you you kind of know it's delicate. When they start talking about things like eggplant parmesan and swordfish, and meatballs, mm -hmm. and tomato sauce with ricotta, and chorizo oh, stuffed red peppers, <laughs> we are talking about somebody right here who can hold their own. Yeah. This is this is not a timid wine. No. That sounds delicious. Agreed. I, once again, I'm going to try and get, like, throw my hat in the ring for Paula. Paula should cook me dinner. Com put in the comments if you think she should. <laughs> <laughs> we can do a live, I have, I have live from really Paula. Good things. I love to cook. 
live from Paula's kitchen. All right, we should do that one day. We should. That'd we should plan a road trip. So, um, somebody said Boozy Scientist. Shout out to Boozy Scientist. Um, he just joined our affiliate program, which I don't want to go into too much detail, but basically, um. We're having a team of people try to help us promote our products, which is super exciting. Shout out to him. Um, super excited to have him on board. He also was in our Valentine's Day photo contest and put in a tremendous amount of effort and somehow did not win. I was, like he, he had like half the entries. And I was just, I was like crossing my fingers, but I used a random number generator. I was fair. But shout out to you, Boozy Scientist. Um, he has a lot of great content, so... Uh, you can check out his page for a lot of homebrewing stuff. He mm -hmm. says he has 17 wine bottles and 16 beer bottles left from his last six-gallon batch of Moscato, and it was a kit. There you go. Yeah. The, uh, these are The kits are amazing. I've had, um, we, limited edition carry a pink Moscato throughout the year, I mean, uh -huh. and it's one of those, again, I once think you I buy, remember, yeah. Do we still we have make, some in stock? No, they're no. gone. They went they're gone. And we even had pink Pinot Grigio this year, Ooh. which was a super cool idea. But we did the pink Moscato for the warehouse manager's wedding. Oh, really? And designed, like, the cool, Todd, I'm only going to say one nice thing about Todd. Um, Todd designed the nicest and most beautiful labels for it, and we, uh -huh. that was the wedding wine. That's cool. Super fun. I made it. Yeah, it's so cool how home brewing just like really brings people together. We are together. a family. Yeah, even, it's really even true. Even Todd. Even Todd. <laughs> Todd. <laughs> don't tell him I said that. I always ask him the next day if he watches it, and he's like, "Oh no, why? I don't, I don't really." <laughs> I think he does. Secretly. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the next kit. Okay. So the next kit is the Toronto's Muscat. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is going to be a white wine. It's kind of going to be the opposite of this, actually. Yes, but it's from Argentina, which is, again, one of my regions. Ooh. Um, so Mendoza is where this vineyard is, and uh, it's some of the highest vineyards in the world, which I never really thought about the fact that... Elevation, climate, soil, all of it matters. Okay, she's not even going to let me finish. Cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I never really thought about that, though. All of those things. Um, it's 900 feet above sea level, so mm -hmm. that's crazy to my brain. You're a climber, so go ahead. You know more about that than I do. <laughs> Did That's you guys true. know that about her? She climbs rocks yeah. for fun. Yeah, I rock climb. It's like one of my main hobbies. People are always telling me. I climb out of bed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I like, I think I climb rocks better than I climb out of bed most days, not gonna lie. <laughs> um, so this is a blend. So Toronto's and Muscat are both uh, aromatic whites. So that's going to mean that they have a lot of aroma to them. Great, great sniffer. You're going to get that nose. Mm -hmm. um, the grapes, so the soil that they grow in, it's not volcano grapes. Mm -hmm. It is um, like dry, pretty dry, rocky soil. So it's going to make the grapes smaller because they can't get as much nutrients. Um, but like more concentrated, essentially. So. A little more bang for your buck. Yep. Uh, and this wine is going to have a floral peach and citrus yeah, flavor to it. But I love peaches. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. And so I'm just imagining the food pairings would be like I have lighter. Those. Oh, weird. Hmm. <laughs> what are the food pairings? Well, <laughs> well I'm glad you asked. <laughs> so, so brewing, fermenting, growing all brings people together. Rock climbers are cranky, but do what you For want. sure. For sure. That's part of why it's so fun. Well, if you were part of the rock climbing community, too, you'd realize there is, it's very much about community instead of just, like, wanting to die. It's actually quite the instead opposite. Instead of just wanting to it's die. It's pretty much quite the opposite of what people think that it is. No, I think because you're also a runner, so you have a runner's group. You just like extreme sports. Uh, yeah, I just I like, like extreme I just, drinking. I just like things and food. that most people consider punishment. Dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, I my, both of my sons were cross country runners, and one of their one had their shirt that said, "My sport is your punishment." Yep. So I get that. Yep. All right, food. Let's go back to food. Yeah, all right, we're food all over pairings. The place today. We are. It's okay. We're in a um, closet. Ooh, <laughs> coconut curry. Poached cod is one of the things. I don't know how you feel about curry. I, I love curry. Did curry. I used to hate it, and now I love it. Oh, well, you know, my my one of my youngest son was in in uh, Tokyo studying abroad. I went to visit him and had, oh, I didn't know had that. curry there, and I fell in love with it there. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, he even makes his own tofu curry. So That's so cool. It'd be great with. I us. was born in Japan. I don't know if anybody knew that. There you go. And he was in Tokyo. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's cool. 
That's how he met his really darling girlfriend. Aww. Um, so smoked salmon, grilled chicken, fish, and bananas, risotto. Yes, I love risotto. Um, spicy Thai noodles, goat cheese, um, biscotti. So you are talking about things that are just smooth and still with flavor, but smooth and would pair well with this and bring out those those aromas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you weren't, I mean, it's completely different food. Yeah. It's like night and day. Yes. Yes. So. But that speaks volumes to the wine itself. Right. It's really cool how those flavors can like pair together. And mm -hmm. to be completely honest, I know this isn't going to shock anyone, but I have never had like a wine and food pairing together. We will fix that but at some point. But it makes sense. Like it makes sense in my head. So. It'll make sense in your mouth too. You'll, yeah. you'll be like, I'll be like, I get it now. Yeah. Yeah. Because we've, I've had some really amazing ones and it has been, um, Educational. I call any time we go out to eat educational. Educa <laughs> educational. I'm just on a field trip. <laughs> I'm just working. Um, I also forgot to mention, so the floral peach and citrus was from the Toronto's part of it. And mm -hmm. then honeysuckle and mandarin orange was from the Muscat, which is makes sense because it's basically, I mean, yeah, it's honeysuckle. Yeah, that's super sweet. citrusy. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I used to, so I used to live in Hawaii, and when I lived there, they had a bunch of honeysuckle bushes. Mm -hmm. And I'd always, like, as a kid, always, like suck the honey out of the honeysuckles. I don't know anything about that. Really? Yeah. Truly. Yeah, it it truly it truly does taste like just straight up honey from the middle of them. It's really, I love it's really honey. cool. Mm -hmm. We'd like destroy the entire bush. It was horrible. Children, but, get away from my bushes. <laughs> yeah. Get off my lawn. Oh my. Anyways. So I do want to also mention um the white blend that we've got here has um it is dry, so it, it's not sweet. Okay, so it's it's dry. It's not off dry. It, it is a dry, and, and muscat can be sweet, dry, blush. It can be just about anything. There's muscat grapes can be made in just about anything. So, so what's mm -hmm. blush? Like what? Blush um, is, if, if you ask me, and it's an unsophisticated right, yeah. answer, if, it, if like the white wine and the red wine got together and had a baby, they'd have That's a blush. blush. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's kind of like if you say, okay, I like... Uh, Alfredo sauce or marinara, but if they have rosé, you get a rosé. Okay, okay. okay, that's a blush. Cool. Everything I do in my life is a metaphor, I swear to God. <laughs> but, yeah, so um, you, the muscat grapes can be used for any of those. This is going to be dry. Okay, this is going to end up being dry. It's not going to be sweet, and it's no oak. So, and, and, and we were talking about that in a previous where we did the tasting of the oak chardonnay versus the un-oak chardonnay. There's no oaking in this white. So that's why... It pairs so delicately and beautifully mm -hmm. with things like cod. But the red one is oaked, right? Now the, the red, the red one, one is. has a medium oak. Well, yeah. I don't know if I mentioned too, but the the, the um the Norello is thirteen point five percent alcohol, and then um or ABV, and then uh, this one's thirteen. So. Did we say the price on this one? Um, one fifty four ninety five. So it's a little bit more expensive, but you're looking at a blend, right? Mm -hmm. And a blend of like two really good. Yeah, things. fantastic. So. Yeah, and you're gonna look at like this is medium bodied. The the white is medium bodied, and the red is a little bit more full bodied. Okay. Which is right up my alley. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sweet. Okay. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed our thirsty Thursday from Paula's office. Uh, maybe it's we'll, a little bit quieter. In I here. was gonna say maybe we'll start doing our lives in here. Um, it's a shoebox. <laughs> If uh, anyone has any questions or anything before we go, I can... Do and it. these are up on the website, correct? HomebrewOhio.com? Yep, yep okay. they're up HomebrewOhio.com. Um, Three new little glasses. Yeah, so grab a glass, grab a kit. Uh, it takes six to eight weeks to make one of them. So. Yeah. And you are going to want to give the white at least three um, months in the bottle to mature. You're going to want the red to have at least six months in the bottle to mature. Really? Okay. And then enjoy. So yeah, these are these are high enough quality and very sophisticated that they are going to have a little bit of bottle shock and need ma maturation time. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Well, with that, I hope everyone has a good rest of their week. Um, cheers. Cheers, my glasses. My oh, glasses somebody are empty. really liked it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my glasses is empty, so I just went ahead and set that down. Maybe thinking I no agree. No, <laughs> like I didn't do it. Um, yeah, your pores were perfect today. Paula went a little heavy on the pores last time. I did. I did. We were a little buzzed. <laughs> we were fine. So fine. If, if anyone doesn't know, she's technically my boss, so I can't, I can't get in trouble. And because you're kind of the boss of the entire company. Well, I, 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 I do yell at me. 
<laughs> All right, we're going to go before we get in any more trouble. Goodbye. Oh, wait, wait, wait. What? That guy. I wanted to give a shout out to that guy from L.D. Carlson. Oh, Evan. Evan. Hi, Evan. If you're watching, hello. All right, goodbye. <laughs> I, I was like, oh, I want to I wanna give a shout out to him. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god.